Hello and welcome. I'm finally back at my studio in London, which means that you will see more of me in the next couple of weeks. And because I haven't been around for a while, I decided to show you something basic that doesn't need a lot of preparation from my side, but still can be beneficial to a lot of people on the internet. And as you could already guess from the title of the video, I'm going to show you how to install Proxmox on one of the Hatsner servers. And for those of you who don't know what Hatsner is, and I sure hope I pronounce it right, um, if not, don't give me much hate in the comments. So Hatsner is a hosting company based in Germany, but they have data centers all around Europe. I think at the moment they cover uh, Germany, Finland and Denmark. So what's cool about Hatsner and what actually separates them from other service providers in this area is their very affordable pricing. For example, you can get a fixed price per month of 34 euros, which comes up to around 50 bucks, I think. Yeah, 40 bucks, I'm sorry, 40 bucks. So you can get a bare metal server for 34 euros, which comes up to 40 bucks. With um, it's an older i7, but it has two three terabyte drives and 16 gigs of RAM. If you wanted to go a little bit higher, they have a third generation i7, two 1.5 terabyte drives and 16 gigs of RAM. For example, this server with 32 gigs of RAM, you can get for only 35 euros, which comes up to what? $42? $41. Well, 41 and a half. And if you are wondering how they could keep their price is so low, you can go on their website and read about it in more detail. But essentially, they reuse old enterprise hardware, like these Dell Optiplex machines and such. But me talking about Hatsner politics is probably not why you clicked on this video. So let's actually start installing Proxmox. And if I switch to the other tab with Proxmox already running, which I'm going to be reinstalling actually to show you the whole process. Um, let me show you that ping to Google works and DNS works as well. So networking works, everything else works, and I even have ZFS pool on this server, but I will not be covering how to configure it in this video. You can find plenty of information on the internet how to do it. Because the main problem I had with Proxmox on Hatsner is the networking. And I will actually show you how to deploy Proxmox to Hatsner server, and then how to set up network properly so that your VMs can have direct access to the internet with public IP address. Or if you want to, you could also use something like OPN Sense and create few empty bridges to create an internal network of the VMs and only OPN Sense VM will have the public IP address. All the other VMs will have the internal IP addresses that will be served by OPN Sense. But this is just what you can do. Um, I'm not going to show you how to configure OPN Sense and other bridges for internal networking, things like that. What I will show you is how to configure basic networking and how to get your VM to actually connect to the internet with public IP address. If there is a demand for it, I can cover installing OPN Sense on Proxmox and creating small internal network to kind of create your own home lab environment on top of bare metal Hatsner host. So you don't waste money on electricity and things like that at home. But for now, let's jump into the installation itself. So what we want to do is go to rescue tab in your servers and activate rescue operating system. Operating system type is Linux. Architecture is 64 bit and I'm going to choose my public key. If you don't have one, that's completely fine, because you'll be able to use password with the root account as well. So I'm going to activate my rescue system. And I will reboot my server. 
Now the rescue system is active for next 60 minutes. So just wait for your server to reboot and try SSHing into it. As you can see, it's asking for password, which means that it's still killing some of the VMs and uh, it's still in the reboot process. Let's actually ping it to see whenever it goes down and comes back up again. All right, the rescue environment is finally up and it warns me about remote host identification. I know for a fact that it's fine because we have just reset the host. As you can see, it's a pretty basic machine with i7 third generation, 16 gigs of RAM and two hard drives, three terabytes each. Now what we need to do is just read this welcome message. And in this sentence, we have run install image command. We just need to start it. So what we need is other section and then Proxmox booster. This image is not supported by Hatzner. Um, it's completely fine. Um, that's okay. And on the next screen, you're gonna be presented with configuration file that you need to change in order for your hardware to work. For example, on this machine, I need software RAID 1, which means that uh, I need to specify one here and software RAID level as one over here. Let's change the host name in this section. And now let's move on to the file system configuration. And if you scroll down past all of the commented outlines like these, you're gonna see this part. So partition swap is gonna be eight gig, then boot 512 meg, that's not enough. I'll set it to 2000 megs, or actually we can set it to just two gigabytes. Then root partition, I wanna change to ext4 and all and I don't want to have separate home partition. Maybe on the production server you want to have it, but because it's a demo machine, I don't wanna mess with the partitioning. So that's all for that part. And uh, this is pretty much it. You can press F2 to save and F10 to quit. Data on dev SDA will be deleted. Yeah, I'm fine with that and data on SDB will be deleted too. I'm completely fine with that. Now script from Hetzner will install Debian Booster onto your hard drives, and then it will grab Proxmox repos and install Proxmox on top of ready to go Debian system. So I suggest grab a tea or coffee and come back when it's done. All right, great. Installation is now complete and we can reboot the system. Now wait for the system to come back. Yay, server is back. Key verification has failed again, but we can fix that. Okay, yes. And I'm in without typing in the password because server used my public key. Now what we wanna do is make sure that our system is up to date. Keep in mind that it's running in two hard drives, so it might be not as fast as your home PC, but our packages are up to date. Now what we need to do is, sorry, install htop and if up, down, to, yes. Now when this is installed, we need to go ahead and edit our network configuration. Now when I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove IPv6 stuff because I don't need it myself. If you do, read some documentation on the Hetzner website how to deal with that. But basically what we want to do here is to insert few lines into our configuration. 
Then I'll also remove this line and I'll add a few enters over here. So what you need to specify for your interface is interface, then interface name, init, static. As you could see, I just added a few enters in here to make my life a bit easier and type less. Now we just need to create a bridge interface, vmbr0, init, static. Okay, address we have, then we need the gateway and we can remove the NAT mask and specify slash 27 or we can leave the NAT mask in. Either way, it's gonna work fine. I don't need this route, so I'll just comment it out in case I'll need it any time later. Um, now we just need a few extra arguments in here. Bridge ports and specify your port, which is in here. Then bridge STP off, because we only have one port. All right, now bridge FD1. Now point to point. And for point to point, use your gateway IP. Next, set bridge hello to two. And bridge max age to 12. In case you are wondering, I didn't come up with this. I read it in Hatsnar documentation and I'm just making it easier for you to follow. All right, now I'll copy paste some other configuration, which will create the internal bridge for VMs to use. In my case, it's gonna be called VMBR100. Interface VMBR100, bridge ports none, because we don't need to tie it to any port. It will be internal network. I don't wanna play and adjust spacing in here and here because it's a demo system, but obviously you wanna do that on production system so it all looks nice and tidy. All right, I'll save this, exit, and I'll reboot my system. By the way, if you are wondering if you need to type that in by hand, you don't actually have to. I'll leave uh, some instructions down below in the video description. Either I'll connect it to my blog or I'll leave some instructions on the paste to bin. Let's ping the server to actually verify that our network configuration was accepted successfully. I started to worry a little bit there but uh, our server came back just fine. Let's SSH back in. And the server is up. Let's ping Cloudflare servers. Um, the ping is up by IP, but what if I use google.com? DNS is up too. Okay, that's all good stuff. Now when this is all ready, let's log in to the Proxmox web interface. All right, the web interface is up. At this point, what you need to do is reset the password. And you can do that by using PASSWD command. So pass WD and just paste your password in. That's once and that's twice. All right, password updated successfully. Now to log in, use username root and your password that you just set. Now when we have access to our Proxmox web UI, let's actually configure the firewall. Because system is wide open, 
and uh, anyone can probe any port, things like that. Let's just make sure that no one can access what they shouldn't. So go to data center section, then firewall section and add a new rule. Direction in, action, accept. This all doesn't matter. We just need destination port of 22 and protocol is TCP. For the comment, I'll use allow SSH. Log level notice. So whenever someone tries to connect to our server via SSH, we're going to have the log record in the firewall. Okay, add that. Now I also like my servers to respond to ping so I can monitor them more easily with simple utilities. Log level, I choose no log, but you can use your own judgment for that. And for comment, I'll use allow ping, add. And another rule would be to allow destination port 8006 to allow web UI. And for the protocol, I'll choose TCP comment, allow web UI, log level, notice, add. And now this is all ready to go. We just need to go to options, firewall enable, yes. Input policy drop, output policy accept. Just don't forget that you need to add your accept rules first so you don't get disconnected from Proxmox server. Otherwise, it will be easier to reinstall it than to troubleshoot the issue and um, actually fix this. So uh, be very careful with uh, what you do first. Add the rules and then activate the firewall. Now when this is done, last thing to do would be to go back to Hatzner and go to IPs tab. So I already have an additional IP for one of my VMs to get public IP. So what you'll need to do here is go to order additional IPs. Um, choose one additional IP, describe why you need it, for example, for internal VM use and agree to the terms and conditions. It might take up to 20 minutes for them to come back to you and actually provide you with IP address and uh, they will notify you via email when it was done. But you need that separate IP address for your VM to use. And next to your new VM IP address, you're going to have this icon which will say request a separate Mac or something between that lines. But in my case, it's reset because I already requested the Mac. Then when all of the preparation done for the IP address, you're going to see your separate Mac. You have to copy it. Go to Proxmox and create a new VM name. Let's call it test VM. OS, uh, it's actually it actually doesn't matter. Don't use any media because we're not going to install it. I'm just going to show you how to configure it. So it works fine. System is irrelevant, hard disk irrelevant, CPU irrelevant, you can use your own judgment to configure all of that. The only section I want to show you is um, the networking. All right, the bridge isn't showing up for some reason. Now, as you could just see, I don't know why, but it didn't accept my configuration the first time. So what I had to do is uh, edit the interfaces file again, 
and then do if op minus a for my demo server to recognize the network configuration. Let me give the server another reboot and let's see if it fixes that. Okay, the server came back, unable to connect. Now let's check network config. All right, it's, uh, it's all good. So if your configuration didn't work first time just as mine did, you need to do this. You need to edit your configuration file again in here. And when you are done, do if up minus a, it will apply the network configuration, then do reboot, and your server will reboot and come back with proper network configuration. This process seemed to have fixed my issue. And hopefully, if that happens to you too, you know what to do. All right, let's now create the VM. Test VM, OS, don't use any media, anything, anything irrelevant. All right, so bridge is gonna be VMBR zero. Then type of your network interface is irrelevant. You're gonna use what's best for your guest VM. Then you need to go back and grab MAC address of your separate IP and insert it into the MAC address section. Remove the firewall option, click next and finish. That's pretty much it. Now, whenever you start the VM, it should automatically pick up the IP address. But in case it doesn't, go back to your control panel and hover over your IP address. Take a note of gateway, netmask and broadcast addresses. So just type that out manually into your VM. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you watched this video, but still have some questions about Proxmox running on Hatsner servers, you can reach out to me via email, our Reddit community, or you could just simply send me a DM on Reddit. I'm doing the consulting work, so I'll be able to help you out in no time. Again, thank you very much for making it to the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.